training during the COVID epidemic, take number three. I am assuming here a basic understanding or knowledge, at least in a general manner, of the theory of periodization or the concept of the training cycle. Basically, you cannot train all three primary energy systems to their maximum at the same time. Each sport tends to emphasize perhaps some aspects of those energy systems, but a maximum performance for most sports, especially like fencing, requires careful guidance and development of those three systems. They cannot be maximized at the same time. If you try to do that, that's when you do get overuse, injuries, training, burnout, that kind of thing. So the training cycle is a very important one, okay? You cannot have them all at peak level at the same time. When you are working on your endurance, you have less time and effort and your system is not prepared to make maximum strength gains. When you're working on your strength, your actual cardiovascular endurance declines and so does muscle specific endurance. It can't be maintained the same way with just strength. Um, you need a good strength base to pursue plyometric training and higher levels of intensity. But to be safe when you're doing that high intensity training, you have to have the strength base. To improve your recovery from the high intensity training, you still need a good cardiovascular base. And a fencing athlete, or any peak sport athlete has to have certain times that the training changes to maximize the performance they need for competition. Normally we would be in, we'd be in a strength phase or a peaking phase, depending upon what you're getting ready for. If you're getting ready for junior world championships, you'd have been in a, in a plyometric peaking phase. If you were getting ready for national qualifiers and then summer national championships, you'd be in your strength phase, eventually transitioning over to agility plyometrics. After summer nationals, after a world championships, any annual peak event, athlete needs to take a break. Active rest. That doesn't mean lying around the sofa while you're resting. It means going out, doing something different. Do a different sport for a while. Pick up, pick, up, pick up another strength skill, add to your variety of knowledge, and just work on your endurance. You're laying the cardiovascular endurance base for the next training cycle. If you have a better cardiovascular system, you deliver oxygen better to the muscles. You deliver nutrients. Your muscles recover better because they are better supplied by the bloodstream through your cardiovascular system. That underlies it all. Then you begin your strength work. We're not there yet. Right now we're in the break cycle. We should be working to develop our endurance. This is where we have an opportunity to focus on that. Fencing needs all three systems operating at peak efficiency. But you can't do them all at peak efficiency all at the same time. Go out for a run. Go out for a ride. The, this is laying the base for our endurance cycle. You can run, just don't run close to people. You can bicycle, just watch the traffic. No group runs, no group rides. Those are great social activities, but we're doing social distancing if you live in an American suburb, you're very fortunate for several reasons, but certainly for your training, it's easy to do your outdoor endurance work, safe, keeping safe distances from everybody. So this is the time to build that base. Maybe you don't live in the suburbs. Maybe you live in the city, it's too crowded. You can't stay separated enough out on your bike. There's just no good place to run. Well, run at home. If you're lucky enough to have a treadmill or a bike trainer at home, Awesome. If not, you can still find a high ceiling, jump rope at home, lots of footwork, dance and place for a half hour, put on some great music. But are you working hard enough? How do you know? Are you sweating? There is a good start. Okay. Another way is to do your heart rate. Okay. Maximum heart rate. Calculate that. This is again a very rough guideline. Okay. 
220 minus your age. That's right now still the standard for roughly what's your theoretical age heart rate maximum. The fitter you are, the higher that maximum level can be maintained by exercise and fitness as you get older. Your peak heart rate, of course, determines how hard can you work in intense anaerobic situations. Build that through the aerobic work. You need to be working at at least 60% of that theoretical maximum, up to about 80-85% of that maximum. For a fencer, try to strain at the higher end of that. It might be hard running in place at home to get it up that high, but some of the stuff we did on the videos, definitely that's going to get your heart rate up that high. Try to maintain it. If you can't maintain it for 20-30 minutes, you need to back off. That's working at least at your 60% rate. Okay, That's the minimum heart rate you need to get some aerobic benefit going. Should be not that hard. Jogging in place at home will get your heart rate up like that. Just got to spend the time doing it. Watch some TV. Have some fun. Do something. If you're playing a video game and the hero has to run, maybe you should be running also, not just sitting on the couch. So 60 to 80% of your age theoretical heart rate mask maximum is your guideline. Work out in this range and you'll be improving your conditioning. Okay. Another simple test is called the jog talk test. If you can run, carry on a conversation at the same time, you're working in your aerobic zone. All right. Now, that's really just for your cardiovascular system, your heart circulatory system. Build up specific muscle endurance. Don't have any heavy weights at home? Well, obviously there's always push-ups. There's always freehand squats, okay? Just do more and more, multiple sets, anything like that. You're gonna be pushing your endurance envelope. Over 20 push-ups, for example, it's no longer a strength workout, becomes an endurance workout. There's lots of different videos out there on various ways to do home workouts. I'm going to put something together that's a little bit specific, I feel, for our fencing muscle needs. But any of the good home workouts, pick one that's fun, do it, make up your own. You know how to play cards, we'll do a video on that also to review. All those things will help make your workout interesting. Should be at least half hour to an hour or more. And of course, all the strength specific exercises that were, have already been included in the videos extending, using your mask, hold a couple of cans in your hand, need a heavier weight, put a bunch of cans in a bag, now you've got a weight you can use for curls, put some more cans in the bag, hold the bag goblet squat style, now you've got a heavier weight to make your squats a little more challenging, okay? And all it gets boring once you get to the point where you're doing 30 squats in a set, yeah, you know, been there, do that. For lateral raises, Hold on to a couple of heavy cans. Great. And now you're doing some strength endurance work. This is a chance to lay the base. It's going to help you get back to a heavier weight when you're back in the gym again. When you're back to training, everything will be so much easier from this base. Okay. Now, bike riding is my favorite activity of cross training to do. All right. Can't run so much anymore. Running was okay, I enjoyed it. Biking's even better. You may have heard some countries have banned bicycling though, cyclists from the streets, particularly Italy and Spain, which have both been very hard hit by the COVID virus. I've not heard anything from Amsterdam about that, or from Holland rather, about banning cycling, because they're another big bicycle transport country. But the Italians and the Spanish have banned bicycling not because of the dangers of transmission of COVID virus or because it um, causes it to be worse or whatever. Their concern in banning bicycling has been bicycle accidents. They don't want emergency room space, trauma ward space taken up by you know a bicycle accident when they're needing the space for somebody who's got severe COVID-19 infection. That's why they banned it. All the rest of the evidence shows that going out and being active outside, bicycling, running, exercising, obviously can't go to the park maybe, they're all seem to be closed off, 
is good for you. It seems to help, if not prevent, certainly it lessens the effects. All the research regarding intense training and training in general and illness is that training helps. The evidence is that even an athlete in intense training has a higher, more responsive immune system. If you're completely exhausted, of course, from overtraining, that's a, that's a little bit different issue. But even intense, high training does not make you more susceptible to getting ill. The evidence also suggests that exercising, breaking a sweat when you're when you're when you're sick, that helps you get over it. If you have a head cold, there's no reason to stop training. You might cut back a little bit just because you're feeling more uncomfortable, but you can still keep training. Sweating is good for you. Maybe you have a bad case of the flu, the body aches, things like that. Um, evidence, again, suggests that a hot bath certainly is going to make you feel better, make me feel better, and may also help get rid of the virus a little bit quicker because what do you do when you take a hot bath? You're lying there and sweating. So it's still good within that principle. You need to break a sweat. Go out, go for a ride, go for a run. If you really want to make sure you're working hard enough, check your heart rate, you know, um, during that ride and run. Home workouts, same thing. I've got a whole series out there now of fencing specific ones. Make them longer. You've got an endurance workout. Um, they weren't designed to be the full workout for the length of the video. You'll find that you're working hard and you're going to be getting your heart rate up. Again, taking your heart rate is interesting. Um, helps keep track of your wor work. Helps you motivate a little bit. Also, over a period of time, as your endurance improves, um, in theory, your heart rate should also drop and be maintained lower. Whatever age you need to do endurance work. For your strength work, improvise a little bit. Okay, you've got heavy stuff at home. Pick it up, put it down, clean up your room. There is no firm research, remember, to indicate that intense training is going to make you get sick more often. The evidence is, again, that some training at least is going to help you get well if you are sick and may help prevent you from getting sick by improvement of the immune system. most important thing, like I say, is get the heart rate up and sweat. Keep your technical and mechanical skills in good condition through this time. Also, take your weapon in hand. Practice your specific skills with it. If you've got a mirror, do them in front of the mirror. Hit the target ball, hit the target work. That's your technical work. It's not going to be enough when you're paying attention to the technical part to keep your endurance up from your hand skills. But again, do the oscillation, blade rotation. They're all specific hand, finger, forearm work skills. You need to include those in your strength workout also. Okay. Once we're through this emergency, you'll be fit. Maybe you'll be fitter than you were before and ready to resume strength training and proceed to whatever the next cycle of plyometric training will be in preparation for whatever dates we are handed. Even if you're working and, and still or doing homeschooling from home, yep, I'm sure you're still keeping real busy. But think of all the commuting time you're saving. Take some of that commuting time that you used to spend in the car, on the train, on the bus, and spend some extra time working on your endurance training. Okay, It will just make us stronger when we are ready. Keep on working. Keep on sweating and keep on tuning in for more videos.